Блин, горит бензовоз, заправка горит на Жураске. Блин, горит бензовоз, заправка горит на Жураске. Crimea is of key importance. If the conditions for peace between Ukraine and Russia are to be discussed, this personal opinion was expressed by Polish Foreign Minister Radoslaw Sikorski at a nightcap discussion at the 20th annual YES meeting in Kyiv recently organized by the Viktor Pinchuk Foundation. Crimea is symbolically important for Russia and particularly for Putin, but strategically crucial for Ukraine. So I don't see how they can reach a deal without Crimea being demilitarized. Sikorsky said. He believes that if both countries want it, a solution could be found here. We could put it under a UN mandate with a mission to prepare a fair referendum after having verified who are the rightful inhabitants and all that, and we could kick it down the road by 20 years. Sikorsky suggested one of the options. The Polish minister also expressed the opinion that it was a big mistake for the West, including the Americans, to tell the Ukrainians not to fight in Crimea. If the Ukrainians fought in Crimea, even symbolically, he might not have dared to do Donbass, Sikorsky said. Somewhat earlier, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Oleksandr Sirsky, stated that it is entirely possible to return Crimea occupied by Russia. Of course, this is a big military secret. We will do everything possible to reach the internationally recognized borders of 1991. We must win to free our citizens who are in the occupied territories who are suffering. Crimea will be returned to Ukraine. This is already happening in full swing. The Russian occupation contingent in Crimea is gradually but surely becoming doomed to complete isolation. And after isolation, liberation will follow. Military and political observer Alexander Kovalenko is sure. Ukraine's allies share this position. For example, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan recently emphasized that Russia must return control of the Crimean Peninsula to Ukraine. The Crimea issue remains crucial for Russia as its 2014 illegal annexation marked the beginning of its open aggression against Ukraine. Western governments are buying up ammunition and mortars for delivery to Ukraine from producers in the Western Balkans, particularly Bosnia and Russia-friendly Serbia. According to The Economist, these two countries account for more than 90% of the Western Balkans' military exports. Of particular interest to Ukraine and its backers is the industry's ability to produce ammunition and equipment to both Soviet and NATO standards. Its goods are also generally cheap. A Bosnian shell can cost a quarter of a Western one, writes The Economist. Serbian arms exports have quadrupled since 2020, sending about 80 million euros worth of ammunition since the invasion of Ukraine, according to Jasmin Mujanovic of the New Lines Institute for Strategy and Policy, a think tank. Bosnians' exports in the first four months of 2024 have almost doubled compared with the same period last year. Both Bosnia and Serbia have laws that prohibit them from selling weapons to war zones, but they have found workarounds by using middlemen. The United States, for example, is the main buyer of Bosnian bullets, which are then diverted to Ukraine. Serbia, despite its refusal to impose sanctions on Russia, has shipped thousands of artillery shells via the Czech Republic, Turkey, and a host of front companies. NATO's Balkan members, Croatia, Albania, Montenegro and Macedonia, have handed over much of their stockpiles of old Soviet equipment. Croatia was recently reported to be refurbishing worn-out Kuwaiti M84 tanks for shipment to Ukraine. For some governments in the region, the policy is an opportunity to gain credibility with the US and EU. This is especially true for countries that aspire to join the EU, such as Bosnia and Albania. 
Economic motives also play a role, says Katarina Jokic of the Stockholm International Research Institute. Bosnian munitions factories that were once on the verge of closure are now fully staffed. For Alexander Vucic, the Serbian president, selling arms to Ukraine is part of a delicate balancing act between the West and Russia. But it is also good business providing a net influx of foreign currency. As Reuters reported, Western countries are buying artillery shells from Indian arms manufacturers and then redirecting them to Ukraine. New Delhi has now intervened to stop the trade, despite Moscow's protests. At the same time, as the publication notes, such a scheme for the transfer of ammunition to support the defense of Ukraine has been in effect for more than a year. Among the European countries sending Indian ammunition to Ukraine are Italy and the Czech Republic. 